Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. Be sure to visit the Mayor's Christmas tree at Crown Center Square this holiday season. The 100-foot tall tree, one of the nation's largest, is a symbol of the Mayor's Christmas tree fund. That fund helps more than 7,000 Kansas City families each year. Wooden ornaments made from last year's tree are being sold to support the fund. To purchase an ornament, visit Crown Center Customer Service or call 816-274-7251. The new U.S. Highway 169 interchange at Shoal Creek Parkway is now open. The project replaces traffic signals with roundabouts to reduce stop-and-go traffic. Some sections of the road were widened, bike lanes and sidewalks were added, and a new bridge was built above the highway. The Missouri Department of Transportation managed the project and the city helped fund it. The theme that I chose this year for the Northland Chamber was Trails to Success. And let me tell you, this is one heck of a trail. Uh, not only the transportation for vehicles, but the great pathways for uh, pedestrian, for joggers, for hikers, for bicycles, everything. It, it's a, just a wonderful thing to happen. Really will make this area take off. The city's health department warns that some imported medical products and cosmetics may contain lead and have been linked to at least one local case of lead poisoning in a child. The products in question contain Thanaka and are usually sold in ethnic stores or online for treating acne as a sunscreen or in makeup. Lead exposure can cause serious health problems. If you have this product, throw it away and get a blood lead test. Call the city's lead poisoning prevention program at 816-513-6048 for more information. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Floyd Peoples. I'm the fire marshal for the Kansas City Fire Department. Having an emergency plan in case of a fire is just as important as having a smoke detector. Exit drills in the home, or EDITH, can help people prepare for an emergency. Most home fires occur at night, when people are the least prepared. Home fires can become a disaster if you and your family are not familiar with how to escape during an emergency. To design your own home fire escape plan, sketch the floor plan of your home on a piece of paper. Indicate on the plan all doors, windows, and other areas from which you could escape from each room in your home. Draw arrows to indicate the normal exits, which would be your primary escape route. With an alternate color, draw arrows to indicate a secondary exit from each room in the home. Choose a location outside the home where family members should meet once they've safely escaped. A neighbor's front yard or sidewalk may be an ideal meeting place. Your fire escape plan may look great on paper, but does it really work? Regular exit drills in the home will allow you to test the plan and make adjustments as needed. When practicing your exit drills in the home, remember to use an alternate escape route as well. Children should be closely supervised during drills in the home, and no one should take unnecessary chances. As a reminder, an operating smoke detector should be located in each bedroom and on every level of the home including the basement. Everyone should know the location of telephones in the home and where to find a telephone outside of the home. It is very important that children also know the 911 phone number in order to report a fire or other emergencies to authorities. Remember to take these following steps to stay safe in case of a fire. Prepare a fire escape plan. Install and maintain smoke detectors. Examine your home for fire hazards and take steps to prevent a fire before it occurs. To watch additional videos about 311 or other city services, check the FYI KC webpage at kcmo.org slash FYI KC. I'm Floyd Peoples, Kansas City, Missouri Fire Department. Have a great day. Kansas City's West Side and the West Side Can Center have made giant strides in improving the quality of life for their citizens, and those efforts are being replicated across all shifts thanks to the good work of officers like Nathan Kinate and Bradley Bailey. For insight into their efforts, we spoke with their commander, Captain Darren Ivey. 
Brad and Nate have really taken this project to heart. They noticed that there was a, a problem of tracking individuals over there and problems on the west side, and they took the whole concept of community policing and, and grasped onto it and, and ran with it and done an excellent job along with other members of their sector and other members of the Central Patrol Division. I know we're making a difference because the way that the community is reaching out to the officers now, it used to be that they would reach out to maybe this, the officers assigned to the west side can center, but now officers who work in that area are getting phone calls from the community who need their assistance or who want to pass on information. Community policing should never be going out of style. It, it, it is a concept of police working with the community to solve problems and that's what police work is all about. Our motivation for our project with the Westside community is primarily just to increase the quality of life. Uh, it started out as a violent crime project and has turned into a quality of life project and just helping the community target specific problems that have come up over the last couple months. You know, we just encourage everybody else to increase their presence in, in their communities and, you know, this is something that we thought was a long shot and it's, it's in turn paid off for the community police relationship in the west side and can be taken anywhere else in the city. Things that are letting us know that we're actually making a difference in touching the, touching the community is the citizens coming out and contacting us voluntarily rather than us having to seek them out. Uh, people waving to us as we're driving up and down the streets, people stopping us to say thank you as we're driving through, the, through their neighborhoods. I would definitely say relationships is the, the biggest key. Uh, without to building the relationships that we've built over there, we couldn't have gotten it this far with the project as we've gotten. The, the property crimes, the graffiti, the tagging, has all of a sudden started to con calm down. Uh, people are starting to paint over the old graffiti that's been out there and in turn take more pride in their community. It's been rewarding to actually get some momentum back into daily patrol to actually come to work and have a goal, know that you're going to go out and target specific individuals, specific problems, and, and reach an outcome with that that's going to help somebody else. This project has been probably one of the most rewarding things I've done so far in my career. Uh, it's given us the opportunity to go out and meet people that uh, live in the neighborhoods and to find out rather than a reactive standpoint when someone calls 911, find out what the problems are in the neighborhood so that we can address those before something might happen. It does help making it uh, more enjoyable coming to work every day, uh, going out, targeting specific problems and sp specific people uh, rather than just following the radio. People in the neighborhoods uh, know us by name now. Uh, they're coming out of their houses to talk to us. Uh, and they're not just doing that with us, but they're doing that with other officers as well. Uh, we're trying to essentially change the culture towards the police and how people view the police uh, to know that we're on their side and we want to help them better their neighborhood and better the community. Uh, the West Side Can Center has been a big part in uh, kind of providing uh, a starting point for this project. Uh, uh, Officer Tomasek and Officer Villalobos have done tremendous work on the west side over the years and we wanted to continue this project into the, other, the shifts that they're not there uh, so that it's a community project uh, through all parts of the day. We've been able to tell that we've made a, made a difference over there this year uh, through increased patrols, uh, through word of mouth from citizens. Uh, violent crime has dropped from uh, 33 reported aggravated assaults in 2012 uh, down to 18 this year. Uh, there were two homicides in the west side area last year and there have not been any this year. Uh, so we like to contribute uh, the work that we've done in addition to the work that other officers are doing uh, through extra patrol, community cooperation to uh, an overall reduction in violent crime and quality of life. Relationships and problem solving is one of the most important aspects of police work and officers like Brad Bailey and Nathan Kinnate personify community policing. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Hi, I'm Colleen Doctorin with Casey Green. As part of America Recycles Day, the city sponsored two recycling events for paper and electronics with help from our friends at Bridging the Gap. Residents recycled nearly 13,000 pounds of electronic waste during the drop-off event at the Sprint Center and more than 4,000 pounds of paper. Residents simply had to pull up as volunteers unloaded computers, monitors, televisions, fax machines, and other electronics for recycling. Sustainability is a top priority in our city, and we Kansas Cityans have worked hard over the last 10 years to implement projects and programs to make the city more green. 
The Kansas City Green Team offers programs like recycling events throughout the year to encourage residents to be more green too. The city is also sponsoring holiday light recycling at the city's three drop-off recycling centers through February 15th. The centers are open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Wednesday through Saturday. The centers are located at Metro North Mall in the Northwest parking lot, 400 Northwest Ferry Road, the former Walmart Supercenter parking lot, 9051 Hillcrest Road, and at the city's environmental campus, 4707 Doremus Avenue. For more information on the city's recycling programs, visit our website at kcmo.org. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Mark McHenry with the Kansas City, Missouri Department of Parks and Recreation and uh, here to kind of kick off our program. Glad everybody's here. Thanks for the beautiful weather and uh, nice fall day. And this is a great project. Uh, first, because it's going to provide a new home for, uh, for dogs in the Northland and uh, the Southland in some cases. So we're glad to have this. And also, it's a great partnership between Kansas City, Missouri and the city of North Kansas City. And that doesn't happen every time. The two cities can work together in a cooperative venue. And, uh, I think you're all aware of the history of this piece of property and its conjunction with Kansas City, Missouri, and then of course the fountain, this and the beautiful uh, Northland uh, Children's Fountain to the to the west of us, which is also a partnership between the city of North Kansas City and the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, I've got some comments I'm going to come back with a little bit, but uh, first I'd like to uh, introduce uh, your park director, uh, David Schnabel. He's your director here in North Kansas City, and he's going to talk about the city of North Kansas City and their involvement. Uh, I also would like to take this opportunity, obviously, to uh, express my thanks for everybody to uh, showing up today and enjoying, again, this beautiful weather that we're having for our uh, groundbreaking. Uh, we have several uh, people of uh, note in, uh, here from the city of North Kansas City, and the and, uh, first one of, of those would be Mayor Don Stilo, and I think Don would like to say just a few words. Uh, to express some of the feelings for the city of North Kansas City, so why don't you just step up there and get me that place. Help yourself, Don. Help me I think we can officially say now that North Town has went to the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always great to see good things happening in the Northland for quality of life. Uh, and the idea of communities being able to cooperate, work together for the benefit of everybody, it's just a tremendous deal, and I applaud everybody that's been involved with that, and thank you very much. It's been said before, but uh, I think it's just so important to mention the partnership here that this is not the first time that North Kansas City and Kansas City has worked together. We, of course, have a children's fountain right over there. It's great success that everybody knows about in this city, and uh, I mean, that was a great partnership from the very beginning. So, and me, uh, Growing up here in uh, the Northland and going to North Kansas City High School, it's fun to be here, spending a lot of time down here at Mackin Park and uh, soccer games on Saturdays. So uh, it's just both uh, both cities have a lot of history and parks, and uh, just glad to see us working together to have another one here. So thanks for all for uh, coming out here and for uh, everything that's been done here. It's really exciting. Thank you. Anyway, that uh, gets us where we are. Part of what we're going to do today is we're planting a tree. The tree uh, is here ready to shove a little soil around it, and that, of course, will then provide some shade for this beautiful new dog park. <laughs> the winter season is nearly here, and that means snow and icy weather is on the way. During storms, the city plows 6,400 lane miles of pavement. That adds up to the same distance as a single lane road from Kansas City to Japan. Stay safe and help out the city's snow removal crews with these tips. If you must park on the street during snowfall, use the north or the west side so that plows can get through. Otherwise, your street may get skipped. Don't park on emergency snow routes or you may be towed or ticketed. Wait 36 hours after snow stops falling before you call 311 or tweet at KCMO 311 about slick spots or missed streets. This allows crews time to complete their assigned snow routes. Also, don't let your children play in snow banks along the road. Those large piles of snow may seem like a big giant fort, but children are in danger of tumbling onto the road in front of cars or snow plows. And when shoveling the end of your driveway where it meets the road, 
you can clear a 10-foot strip along the curb to the left. That way, snow plows won't push the snow right back into your driveway. The city will post updates about major snow events on Twitter, Facebook, Nixle, and its dedicated snow webpage, kcmo.org snow. The Main Street Bridge over Interstate 670 is reopening. The project includes a new three-lane concrete bridge and improvements to the Truman Road intersection. Downtown streetcar crews took advantage of the construction to lay the very first length of streetcar track so that that bridge will remain open as the remaining track is built in 2014. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org. Just scroll down to the bottom right-hand corner and click on the weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.